Spiritual Teaching 269 Love Each Other 1. People of Israel, who bear the law of Jehovah and the teaching of Christ engraved in your spirit, receive my word, that I give you through man. Open your eyes and look at the events of this time, so that you know that I have come once more to communicate with you. Hear my word and analyze it, assimilate its essence so that you form with the two previous testaments, a single book where you can study forever. 2. I am caressing your heart, with the trials I prepare it for the times to come because after my departure, you will stay in my place. You have commemorated my passion in these dawns. You have remembered and meditated on the facts of the Master, without making representation of these sacred lessons. You have lived those days, because you are the same spirits that at that time you contemplated in surprise, full of amazement, my journey from beginning to end. You were surprised by my humility, you contemplated my birth in the bosom of a poor family, which did not have a home of its own. I only came to teach you to live in compliance with divine laws. Many of you do not understand the meaning of my words and my works, until after a while, when my memory comes to your memory and my examples are like an open book in your life. Today you have returned to earth and once again, you have me very close to you and many of you have doubted this word that I give you through man. You have asked me with disagreement. Why did I choose this medium and why has my work developed in this way, outside of every church? And I say to you, I have descended into the bosom of the people of Israel, establishing the elect in their greatest number in this nation. The rest are scattered in all nations, sent by me, and with them I have communicated spiritually. These are my chosen ones, the ones who have remained. Faithful to me, his heart has not been contaminated and his spirit can perceive my inspirations. Through him I am delivering to the world a wealth of wisdom. 3. My voice does not stop calling to hearts. My light manifests in the consciousness giving it encouragement to awaken and attract all spirit. I will not allow this humanity, whom I love so much, to go further in its materialism. The tests will stop and when my word reaches her, they will awaken her gifts. Her heart will be sensitive and her path will remain indicated. Then he will know how to invoke me. He will seek in me the bomb and he will become my disciple. 4. I will form around you a spiritual environment of well-being that will surround you and everything will be conducive to spiritual elevation. Be patient with unbelievers and you will see that after a while my manifestations will be taken as true and my word will be honored. 5. How I love you, humanity, and how I long for you to build your brotherhood and concord. 6. You will be tireless, new disciples, speaking with this truth. Dull lips that do not speak my word for fear, you are going to unleash yourself at the moment of your decision. A single word spoken in my name can save a sinner, close abysses, stop the stubborn in evil on their way. Do you know the power that my word has? Do you know the force of your power? Speak with examples and fulfill that part of my work, which I have entrusted to you, I will do the rest. 7. I contemplate you as my disciples of the second era. Among you are those who represent John, Peter, Thomas, and also Judas. They being rude, they spoke admirable lessons and did wonders imitating me. 8. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Blessed is he who has not asked me for the gift of clairvoyance to believe, because he has seen me with the eyes of his faith, has recognized the taste of the fruit of my word and has fed. I also bless those who, having received that precious gift as a mission, know how to give witness to me. 9. I will reap the fruits of your sowing. Even the smallest that you offer me I will multiply because this is my will. 10. The book that was sealed in heaven has been opened on the sixth chapter, is the book of seven seals that contains wisdom and judgment and that was unleashed by my love to you to reveal its profound lessons. 11. Man has lived five stages on earth, encouraged by the divine breath of the Spirit, despite which he has not yet understood the spiritual meaning of life, the purpose of his existence, his destiny and his essence. Everything was an arcane impenetrable both for his mind and for his spirit, a sealed book, whose content did not reach your understanding. He vaguely sensed the spiritual life, but without truly knowing the scale of elevation that brings the beings to God.
ignored his highest mission on earth and the virtues and gifts that are part of his spirit, to to be able to win in struggles, to rise above human miseries and to perfect oneself spiritually to dwell in eternal light. 12. It was necessary that the divine book be opened and men contemplate its contents, in order to be saved from the darkness of ignorance that is the origin of all the evils that exist in the world. Who could open that book? By chance, the theologian, the scientist, or the philosopher? No, no one, not even righteous spirits could reveal its content to you, because what the book held was the wisdom of God. 13. Only Christ, the Word, only He, divine love, could do it, but even so, it was necessary to wait, that men were in a position to receive divine revelation without being blinded by the splendor of my spiritual presence and humanity, had to live five stages of trials, lessons, experience and evolution to reach the just development that would allow him to know the mysteries that my arcanum kept for men. 14. The law of God, his divine word given through Christ and all the messages of prophets and emissaries sent, were the seed that maintained the faith of humanity, in a divine promise that always announced light, salvation and justice for all men. 15. This is the expected time for the great revelation, the one through which you understand everything, to you I have manifested through the ages and you know who your father is, who you are and what is the reason of your existence. 16. This is the time when, due to the spiritual evolution you have reached, the tests you have had and the experience that you have gathered, you can receive from my spirit towards yours, the light of wisdom, reserved in my arcana awaiting your preparation. But humanity having reached the necessary degree of evolution to receive my message, I have sent you the first ray of my light, which is this one that has made you speak in ecstasy to the rough and simple men who serve as spokesmen for my inspiration. 17. This ray of light has only been one of preparation. It is like the light of dawn when it already announces the new day. Later my light will reach you fully, illuminating your existence and removing even the last shadow of ignorance, sin and misery. 18. This time, whose dawn you admire in infinity, is the sixth stage that begins in the spiritual life of humanity, era of light, of revelations, of fulfillment of ancient prophecies and forgotten promises. The sixth seal, which when unleashed, overflows its content of wisdom in your spirit, in a message full of justice, clarification and revelations. 19. For you it is the sixth stage, it is the third time in which I have spoken to you more closely, as in that first time in which I materialized my presence and my word in multiple ways, like that second time in that I humanized my word to speak to your heart. 20. Today I make myself heard again, but it is no longer to the senses that I manifest myself, it is not even your heart to whom I speak, it is your spirit with which I come to communicate to teach you the way of evolution that leads to the kingdom of light, the eternal and blessed kingdom of the spirit. 21. What does the sixth seal of the book of God keep in its bosom, on which are written your names and your destinations? Contains teachings, very great tests, revelations of wisdom. 22. What is the mission of my servants at this stage? Pray, meditate, regenerate, sow union, peace and light spiritual development, develop your faculties and powers, fight for your elevation, destroying ignorance, vice, fanaticism in a word, the evil that in so many ways manifests itself among humanity. When men have stopped hating, killing, and betray themselves, when forgiveness and charity have spread from heart to heart, from town to town, and the blood and tears no longer flow, then there will be the great silence that means the communication of spirit to spirit. Then I will untie the last seal, the seventh, in whose stage men will love each other as I taught you when I came to earth. 23. Here you have, in brief and simple words, how the Word of God has always manifested itself, something of which you long to know about the seven seals, the Book of Wisdom and Divine Justice. 24. You have heard, now understand, because later you will have to prophesy, to reveal and to teach. 25. The Divine Tree spreads its branches through counties and cities, giving shade to weary walkers. So I had to be at this time so that, at the same moment, I would make you hear my word in different places, since now I come in spirit. 26. This region in which you are listening to my word had to be prepared so that you could receive me. Tests, pain and bitterness, 
were what stopped your steps and made you open your eyes to reality. That pain removed the dry land of your heart and the tears watered it. Then you were prepared waiting for the seed that is my word. 27. You already know what I have called you for. I want you to be peasants in my lands and that you spread this seed. 28. Beloved peasants, awake. Look, the sun has appeared on the horizon. He invites you to work. 29. I am that sun, and my coming at this time has been a new dawn for you. 30. Let no one have doubts about whether or not he can be useful in my countryside. If I have called you, think that I cannot make a mistake. 31. It is not a work superior to your strength that I have come to entrust to you. More, yes, I tell you, that the older your number and your union greater, the weight of your cross will be less. 32. Before sending your spirit to this planet, the lands were shown to it. It was told that it would come to Sao Peace, that his message would be spiritual, and your spirit rejoiced, promising to be faithful and obedient to his mission. 33. Why now are you afraid to go sowing? Why do you now feel unworthy or incapable of performing the work that rejoiced your spirit when it was entrusted to him? It's because you have let passions get in the way on your path, blocking the way of the spirit, trying to justify its indecision with childish motives. 34. Do not go empty-handed to the valley from which you came. I know that your bitterness would be very great. 35. What must you do to take the first firm step? Meditate deeply on my word and then pray with all your faith and all your senses. From that preparation, an inner strength will begin to emerge that will start a fight incessant with the flesh the spirit will confront matter trying to make the voice of consciousness heard and silence the voice of the flesh. 36. Thus time after time, the spirit will manage to take its place in human life, and when you look back you will contemplate very distant those obstacles that prevented you from taking up your cross to follow me. 37. Doesn't my lesson revive you, toddlers? Doesn't my word awaken you to reality? Don't you feel encouraged in your spirit? 38. See how my word has not had a single reproach or claim for you. It has only come to exhort you with phrases full of light, to the fulfillment of the spiritual mission that you have brought to earth, making you understand that you do not abuse your free will, that neither the spirit intervenes in the duties of matter, nor does it hinder the spirit in its mission. 39. Only my doctrine will be able to give you the norm so that you achieve that harmony between spirit and matter and the only way so that you may do works worthy of your Father in the world, works of disciples on the way to becoming teachers. 40. When will you win in this inner struggle? 41. Some have not even started the fight, others are in full conflict, others, very few, have triumphed over the flesh, but I also contemplate others who, having begun to fight, allowed themselves to be defeated by the enemies who in them they carried themselves and now they go on paths that are not mine. 42. I will look for you again. I still want you to discover for yourself where the truth and the essence of life is and in where are the mirages, the tinsel, the lie. I know that when you return to me shattered, bleeding from the heart and battered in spirit, I will no longer have to explain anything to them because they themselves were to be disappointed. 43. When will you stop being capricious and curious children? 44. Come to my table and while you enjoy the taste of my word, let your spirit fill with light. You will see how after my lesson you will feel the spirit stronger and the flesh more docile and meek. 45. My doctrine loses all its meaning if you do not put it into practice. Well you know, beloved disciples, that the purpose of my law and my doctrine is the practice of good, and that therefore, whoever carries it only in memory or on the lips, without applying it to his works, he is selfish. 46. Before you get up to teach my maxims and expose their concepts, you must begin by practicing the teaching that I have revealed to you, loving your fellow men, living an elevated life, sowing your path with charity and light. If you do not do this, from now on I tell you that you will not have understood spiritualism. He reveals your essence to you. Through him you can form an accurate concept about your father and know yourself. 47. It is true that to achieve spirituality you need a certain renunciation, effort and sacrifice. But if it has awakened in you a desire for elevation, if love begins to vibrate in your being or if the ideal has arisen spiritual, 
instead of sacrifices or renunciation, it will be a pleasure for you to strip yourself of all that is useless, superfluous, or bad that you carry. 48. Hearing me has awakened your spirit, because it has not been the routine ceremony or the repeated word in the same form, the one you have heard. My teaching has impressed your spirit, that is why you have always come with him to long to know what I am going to say, what I am going to reveal to you, but no one thinks that just by listening to me or learning my word, has already fulfilled. 49. At that time, I, humanized in Jesus, always accompanied my word with works of love that were written in all consciousness, so that everyone who wanted to follow in my footsteps would imitate me in the light of the word and in the truth. 50. Hear me now, people, and rise up to fulfill my word with dignity and truth. I see that you carry sadness in your heart, because you are sensing that not all these multitudes are going to adhere to the law that I have written in your consciousness, but I tell you that now, as in the first era, the people will divide. 51. I have spoken to you a lot and I have marked a single path for all, for what I tell you, that the judgment will come for this people, when is the day designated by my will to stop this demonstration if some of my children disobey me? I have come to you as a liberator at this time, pointing out the way of the desert, the spiritual journey of the fight for liberation and salvation, promising you in the end the new land of promise which is peace, light and happiness of the Spirit. Blessed are those who rise up to follow me on this journey, eager for liberation and spirituality, because they will never feel alone or weak in the trials that the vast desert throws at them. On the other hand, woe to those who lack the faith, those who love the world more than the Spirit, those who continue to cling to their idols and their traditions. They, believing they serve me, will be subjects of Pharaoh, who is the flesh, materialism, idolatry. Anyone who longs to reach the promised. Land, the homeland of the Spirit, has to go through the world leaving a mark of good. Come this way and do not fear that if you found your hope in me, it is not possible that you will get lost. If you fear or you distrust, is that your faith is not absolute. I tell you that whoever wants to follow me must be persuaded of my truth. 52. I bless you all, I forgive you, I unite you in my love. 53. Judge yourselves so that you have before the consciousness absolute confidence in the firmness of each of your steps. 54. Define your beliefs as well as your practices, so that you know if you are worthy of being called spiritualists or if you still have to wait a while longer to bear that name. 55. Many of you call yourselves spiritualists because you feel faith in my presence through my communication through human understanding and because you often attend to listen to my word, but I want you to be spiritualists by the practice of well-doing, for the knowledge of the essence of life, for your love for the like, for your worship of God through a high, fruitful and virtuous existence. 56. Let my word be the one that awakens and lifts you, the one that reveals before you all the gifts, faculties, powers and virtues that your spirit treasures. Because you are the ones who carry an inheritance within yourself, you think you are poor because of your ignorance. Your Lord, seeing that you live consecrated to material life, having given you light and spiritual grace, has come to you to wake up and tell you that it is not fair that you suffer from spiritual hunger and thirst to reach the divine source of wisdom, which is reached by the path of spirituality. Because at the beginning of this age, it is as if you too were going to start a day. But truly I tell you that everything that your spirit has gathered in his past, it is the light of experience and the metal to fully penetrate the tests and lessons that the third time brings with it. 57. I draw you to me so that you learn my lessons. Welcome you all to my lesson, blessed persevering. Your presence before my word has a great meaning. It is that of your desire to come closer to me. Only I will be able to discover for you the gifts that you possess and make you feel the responsibility that you have before your brothers. This is the time of judgment, the time of the settlement of all debt, the time of restitution. 58. My divine work is the light that envelopes humanity, illuminates it through consciousness. Some will get the divine message in the form of inspiration, directly to others through the word through my disciples, to others in the form of writings, whose pages contain the essence of my teachings. 59. Step by step and little by little men will awaken to the life of the Spirit. It will be for them like a new existence, like starting a new life full of promise, 
strewn with wonderful surprises and illuminated by light of the greatest ideal, God. 60. Yes, beloved people, God is the ideal of spirits when they tend to rise, because saying God, that is perfection, harmony, wisdom, happiness, light, infinite peace, love, eternity, and the spirit, when it has come out of the crucible of trials, when he has fought with the flesh and with the world in the immense sea of passions, he pauses for a moment to meditate on everything that has happened, like the castaway who, after desperately fighting against the waves, finally arrives clinging to a tree, symbol of his faith and hope, and after looking at the still raging sea, he exclaims, Ship has sunk, but I have been saved. Blessed be the Lord of heaven. So it is with the spirit that, like a castaway, after the storm he stops, meditates, contemplates his passions, his earthly glories and his vanities sink into the past like the wrecked ship. But, seeing that the light of faith breathes in him, rejoicing he exclaims, My father, I thank you because despite so many storms, I have not forgotten you. 61. That is the time of awakening in the spirit and the moment in which its elevation begins. My peace be with you.